Hey folks, Liari here. Today we're reacting to Endless Space 2 Review, Jingo is Joy, Trademarked Edition by Seth Tizen Talk. I hope I'm getting closer to pronouncing that right. Um, this, I've actually played this game a little bit before and this video is recommended in the comments. So I was like, may as well see his review on it. I, I liked it. I'm excited for this. Let's go. Hey, hey, people. Seth here. Humanity. One day, we will okay. inevitably reach the stars. And one day, we will inevitably reach other intelligent, sentient, yet utterly alien races. We will okay. shake their many appendages, engage in trade, exchange ideas, and even attempt diplomacy. But we all know inevitably how this has to end tragic welcome to endless space 2 endless space 2 is a 4x game which if you're not familiar with stands for the four x's expand explore and exterminate all xenomorphs before <laughs> they do the same to you uh, probably you know most likely i've yeah. played this turn-based sci-fi strategy intensely for the better part of a month and before that in about two years and i must confess it's pretty damn good really also, addicting there is a story and it is absolutely critical you understand the lore of this game in the current job market endless space Space historians are in extremely high demand and boast starting salaries of about 300k. Most of the mm. Fortune 500 companies hire at least two of them in order to understand what the fuck is going on. The store. <laughs> okay, sorry. Just... Well, part of what it said there was. 500 companies One hire second. at least two of them in order to understand. Has read and found no enjoyment of Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged. <laughs> Good bit. And what the fuck is going on? The story is told to you through wiki articles, the accuracy of which is questionable, because I've uh, edited several articles and they still haven't caught me. In the universe of Endless Space 1 and 2, there is or was an incredibly advanced civilization called the Endless. What happened to the Endless? Well, there's less of them. The end. Roll credits. But no, they, they... went to space and they developed technology. They revolutionized Are the they endless? by creating dust. Dust is used as money in Endless Space 2. Which it isn't. It's an autonomous cloud computing network of nanomachines that gets smarter as the cloud gets bigger. They're capable of self-assembly, self-autonomy, and farming crypto tokens at rates never before seen in the known galaxy. <gasps> However, they developed Incredible. a little too hard when they figured out how to upload your soul. So half of them went on to live as immortal machines running on the 5G network. These were known as the virtual endless. The other half, known as the concrete endless, considered them an abomination because it's hard to consider consider a sentient laptop as intelligent life. Even harder when you find out it's still running Windows Vista. Unable to <laughs> reconcile their differences, the Endless decided to end each other. The Virtuals unleashed bioweapons on the concrete. The concrete sent malware to their mailbox, forcing them to run 3 billion instances of Bonzi Buddy. Needless I mean, that's to a good say, thing. they wiped each other out. The Endless came to an end, but many centuries later, other races figured out space travel, picking apart the ashes and remains of a civilization long forgotten. In the galaxy of the Endless is where our story takes place. So, what do you do in Endless Space 2? Well, you pick a spacefaring civilization space. and you try to win. But what is victory? Victory can be anything. Money, technology, intergalactic conquest, or even weaponizing the influence of e-girl streamers to absorb every sentient race in the galaxy. Because, as we already know, a sentient brain is still capable of falling victim to becoming a simp. The path to victory is your own free Choice. The game itself is very customizable, meaning there's no reason to pick any speed except fast, any galaxy besides Ovoid, and if anyone dares pick a custom race, we are all going to collectively form a non-aggression pact and hunt you down. Starting off, you only have a single planet. Your home system is very modest, and you need to rapidly scale your operations if you hope to compete with the rest. To do so, you'll need to explore, expand, and colonize new systems. Exploration is very simple. You send an exploration vessel into the great unknown and watch as it dies to pirates. Before that happens, you'll want to find as many uncolonized systems as possible. On each planet, there's a chance of finding curiosities. These are the slow, pulsing rings you see on display. To explore a curiosity, you need to send a probe. It's quite similar to the probe minigame from Mass Effect 2. If successful, the game will let you know, together with a small reward for finding it before anyone else. These can be anything from strategic or luxury resources, planetary anomalies, or even the start of a random quest line. 
line. The point of curiosities is to try and guess which star systems are worth colonizing. In general, any system less than three planets is garbage. Any system with only cold planets is garbage. In fact, ask enough players and you'll find that every possible star system ever formed by the laws of physics is still garbage. Colonize them anyway, because I like the animation that plays each time you do so. There's yes. actually an animation ah. for every type of planet, which I didn't know, because who the fuck colonizes a gas giant <laughs> as their first choice of planet. It, it's like, where are we dropping, boys? Uh, oh yeah, on the burning gas giant. H how are we meant to walk on a gas giant? Very carefully. Anyway, I'm losing I watched track. Dune. You choose a star system, and you pick a more reasonable type of planet to be the base of your colony. Most factions can't settle a system immediately. They need to form an outpost, send colony support, and convince any other players contesting the system to cease their aggressive expansionism. You can do this through liberal policies, such as stealing their food supplies, or less liberal policies, also known as an interplanetary blockade, with a sole purpose of starving them to death. Typically, this is how you greet other players. Otherwise, you blast their ships out of orbit and you get sent a formal complaint, to which you respond accordingly. Diplomacy is an interesting concept. Uh, we do have other things to take care of. These are diplomatic channels, not social media. Again? Are you just lonely? Because <laughs> unlike many games of a similar nature, diplomacy is a tangible resource. In fact, everything is a resource. If you want to condense down the Endless Space 2 experience, you're going to be spending hours of your life trying to increase the five colors, green, orange, yellow, blue, and purple. Respectively, these are food, industry, I really want to dust, replay this. science, and influence, or FIDSI for short. These are the combined economic outputs of your systems. At the beginning, you don't have very much. You can't do very much, so you need more. A lot more. You need food to grow population. Population contributes to the economy and gives you different bonuses depending on the race of that population. But a planet's base output is pathetic, so you need to build improvements. To do that, you need industry. More industry, more production. But you can't have industry without research, and you can't have research without science. Besides unique variations, every faction follows the same unified tech tree. Supporting larger industry requires dust. A lot of dust. And if you're planning to go to war, exponentially Exponentially more dust. To even make the formal declaration that you're going to erase someone off the face of the galaxy, you need influence. It is the most precious resource and represents your combined political power. The bigger your like influence, the, the bigger your sphere of influence. This game doesn't work on national borders. It works on raw intergalactic peer pressure. Have enough influence and you'll absorb everyone without even lifting a finger. Besides other players, there are also minor factions. Did you know the Nigerians govern a sector of space occupied by several different humanoid species? If we say yes, will you feed us? One of those species is the Benkarans. They occupy just 10% of Nigerian space, but take up nearly 80% of the space in Nigerian prisons. Maybe they commit more crimes. These are civilizations that are advanced, yet not advanced enough to avoid a simulation. These are very diverse and can be anything from sentient jellyfish, reformed assassin droids looking for God, or even moving chunks of coral reef remotely piloted by a sentient supercomputer the size of a planet, which in itself was formed by random chance. Minor factions exist to be absorbed by other players. Why? Because you get a free system out of it and a unique racial trait. Never underestimate these because a single good trait can win you the game. There's also pirates. It's okay. Everybody finds me irresistible. <laughs> Pirates exist to occupy every system you ever like and reduce the overall quality of your time and space. Luckily, pirates are business oriented and will not trouble you as long as you pay. Also, I like putting pirate marks on all of my friends' colonies. Consider it an indirect way of saying maybe you should move. Now you've got the basics down. What are you meant to do? You're meant to try and you're meant to fail. Endless Space 2 gives you freedom. Freedom to fuck up and suffer the consequences. The tech tree is subdivided into four distinct categories. Military, Economy, Science, and Empire. Develop your military and you get bigger guns, but you don't get the ships to mount them. You need to develop your empire for that. Then you need a military industrial complex to facilitate the production of your armada, which forces you to tech economy, not only for developing your systems, but for supplying a constant stream of dust. Because bankruptcy is not an option. For reference, one technology unlock is the difference between abject poverty and having the largest intergalactic
Galactic Trade Company incorporated on your home <laughs> system. Why stop there? Get access to the Galactic Commodities Market as well, because Fast. it's a biological requirement for me to speculate the stock market in every game I play. Do all that and realize you neglected science, which is a problem, because every single research you ever research makes every following research more expensive to research. Endless Space 2 is a great galactic scale balancing act. Every action taken is counterbalanced by the opportunity cost of every action not taken. Here's an example. Let's say you found a nice system, but you can't colonize it because each type of planet requires the respective technology to touch ground on their surface. You might spend a bunch of turns teching towards that. As a result, you get a new system. However, your lack of tech leaves you oblivious to the contents. You later find out that ideal Mediterranean planet you picked is filled with dinosaurs, the water is made of mercury, and the atmosphere gives you cancer. If you pumped oh, everything no. into science and exploration, you would have found a much better system nearby. Because you explored the curiosities, you know there's plenty of strategic deposits without the risk of melanoma. Even the worst colony has great potential. Given a development plan, systems can compensate for deficiency using luxury. Low birth rate? Spike the water with red sang. No production? Use jadonics. Do people still keep using the term war criminal in your presence? Despite the fact you've clarified multiple times that enemy civilians are indeed active combatants bring out the hallucinogenic grapes given time any problem can be solved given money any problem can be solved instantaneously i don't know exactly how we're going to terraform a planet in a single turn but i know the next time i look there better be a fucking jungle instead there's a lot of ships in this game right. unique to each faction they're all fully customizable limited only by the type and number of modules available primarily you're going to use them to intimidate your enemies into submission and to intimidate your friends into working a little harder on their friendship your only control over <laughs> i love all the tyler one faces formation and tactics used by your military the rest is a simulation played out by the computer where each time a ship explodes you know the cinematic at the end of diablo 2 where tyriel throws his sword at the world stone and it explodes into a billion chunks of wood yeah that's exactly how every ship explodes in this game combat is very simple there's True. different weapons which have different accuracies depending on the range of engagement. Flat cannons tread anything up close, including long range ballistic missiles, but they bounce off armor. Lasers cut ships in half at mid range, while beam weaponry works at every range. Unless they have shields, you can absolutely get away with filling every slot with a flat cannon, choosing the default tactics card, and still win every fight. Mm. Besides interplanetary combat, you can also directly invade. This works on the same principle, which means I'm I'm still going to use the default tactics card, which uh, just so happens to be preemptive orbital bombardment. Many civilians will die, but that is a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Your chance of success depends entirely on whether or not you have replaced your troops with a mobile suit Gundam. If you conquer a system, you can choose to either spare the population or take a massive hit to your public approval rating by re-educating and reintegrating the native population into the fucking soil. Which is a good time and segue to talk about politics. In Endless Space 2, you have My government, God. you have Senate, and you have an obligation to represent your people. Which is why we have a dictatorship. Power to the masses is power to the upper classes. And any proletariat will see the wisdom of my words. Politics is all-encompassing in Endless Space 2. Any action you take, Endless endorse, elections. or sponsor will shift oh. the political axis True. of your entire empire. I As with real this. life, the opinions of your people are difficult to manage, their motivations difficult to guess. There's a total of six different party ideologies you can choose to support, each two a pair of polar opposites, religious and scientific, militarist and pacifist, ecological and industrial. On top of that, you've got your government. This controls your party representation and how much corruption you can get away with. Democracy has the widest free party representation. It is also the most corrupt because I have no control over my election. Republics and federations are generally more progressive, offering less representation and more opportunities to correct the result of any rigged election. Dictatorship <laughs> completely removes the need for underhanded tactics and ensures that all voices are heard and represented by the single party I choose. Every political party holding office has representatives. These are not your average man. These are heroes recruited from the academy. But what is the academy? I will say, real quick, 
The election system in Endless Space 2 actually works for me because my favorite paradox game is Victoria 2. I'm one of those people, so yeah. You know how I said dust is currency and dust is essentially a cloud computing nanite swarm? Now imagine smoking it because the academy does exactly that you're hiring nanite augmented crackheads to rule your empire these are very diverse in both race and specialization they each have their own unique and interesting backstory except scales scales is literally a giant bat that likes to eat zucchini I want how is she qualified in any way to be my senator i queen i, I don't know but the people the people love her and who am i i love her no to that smile so what's the point of political parties i'll tell you it's called legislation and legislation controls the focus of your empire you can pass laws respective to each party you have in office the leading political party also enacts their own automatic policy scientists let you research high tech without unlocking it religion gives you the moral high ground to escalate a cold war without legal consequence industrialism uses the economy to finance the economy by expanding the economy how could ecology possibly compete well by giving the public announcement that we don't exactly know how to live on a volcano so let's do it anyway militarist rhetoric not only removes the political cost of war it actively encourages you to go to war with absolutely everyone and finally the pacifists can at any time without your consent force you into a state of peace passing law costs influence depending on the size of your empire the longer a party stays in power the more laws you have to choose from for example state enforced eugenics and mandatory sterilization of other races who aren't your own is a relatively simple law to pass with minimal political experience. Asking everyone to work mm. overtime requires a level of finesse and eloquence only seen in the most Machiavellian of politicians. Unlike many 4X games, <laughs> Endless Space 2 has quests. Most of these are faction-specific story missions with branching political options to suit your empire. They're quite interesting, they give you something to do, and most of all, they give you permanent upgrades for the rest of the game. You also have multiplayer. How do you play multiplayer? multiplayer it's quite simple you all connect to a game you play for about 50 turns you forget to make backups of your game and then everyone <laughs> collectively desynchronizes welcome to endless space Tragedy. 2 multiplayer with all that covered you've got a general idea of how to play endless space 2 now let's get to the fun stuff the factions oh. there are currently 12 different races to choose i'm gonna cover them all the sofons are a race of intellectuals despite this they talk in a british accent they're overdeveloped gecko that love science and hate personal health and safety. The less people know a technology, the faster Sophons can obtain it. If you want a fairly vanilla faction with an easy science victory, go play the Sophonity. Conversely, mm. Sorry, Link. I can't give credit. Come back when you're a little... Mm, richer. We have a Lumeris, uh -huh. whose entire ethos, motivation, and philosophy can be crystallized in one word, money. For the Lumeris, no problem is too great, as long as you throw piles of money at it. They also have my favorite faction leader. Commerce, baby. The lifeblood of this and any other galaxy. Who is probably responsible for every single trade cartel in the known galaxy, and arguably runs more of an economic crime syndicate than a legitimate empire. But... I don't care, because Big Titty Fish Mommy is going to buy the galaxy, and I'm gonna help her. If you like making obscene amounts Fair. of cash, amphibious mommy milkers, or just winning the game by accident, play Lumeris. Imagine <laughs> rampant over-industrialization and the fractured ecosystem that follows. Given such dire conditions, what do you think is the most reasonable course of action? You can A, put all your resources into ecological initiatives and repair the sorry state of your planet, or B, digitize yourself and become a gaming laptop. The Vodiani chose the second option. Even better, they made a church out of it. Belief is strength, worship is endless, and heretics are nothing but essence for the harvest. Unlike other races, the Vodiani don't colonize. They travel, they land, and then they harvest. Then we have Horatio. Come to pry on the most stunning man in the galaxy again? Originally yeah. a wealthy trillionaire, Horatio set Brown. out to find his own star system. Along the way, he also found 
extremely advanced cloning technology, so he I made died. a billion copies of the most beautiful and gorgeous person to ever exist, which was of course Horatio. And then Horatio thought to himself, what better than to fill the galaxy with beauty? What better than to fill the galaxy with Horatio. Horatio is concerned with pressing matters such as air conditioning. His government, accordingly, is an eco-fascist dictatorship. Make Horatio great again. Of course, there are other, less fortunate races than Horatio. But Horatio is not only handsome, he is also brilliant. And thus, he finds ways to integrate minority populations by splicing their genetics with Horatio. Yes, many of your less symmetrical friends and family may simply disappear, but know that their memory will live on inside Horatio. Horatio is a classic case of careful who you call ugly in high school, because he just might use the entire galaxy as a glorified eugenics program. The United Empire can be summarized in a single clip. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. <laughs> oh my god, no. I'm doing my part too. This is the a United Starship Empire is an imperialist, expansionist federation where the will of the emperor is that, right? absolute. Any construction, any technology, any luxury he so desires, the empire provides. For the emperor does not ask, he commands. And the raw influence of his voice can make the impossible into reality. If you want to play not only the most industrious faction, but also the one that generates the most influence just by being industrious, try the United Empire, propaganda, patriotism, and the greatest of military industrial complexes await you. Enlist today, service guarantees citizenship. So far, everyone I covered at least have the option of diplomacy. But what if that's just not in your nature? What do you sound like when you scream? The Cravers are fucking terrifying. As a leftover <laughs> bioweapon made by the Virtual Endless, they only have one purpose. Consume everything. Any planet oh. with Cravers on it has a fixed life expectancy. Because the Cravers oh. will rip it, strip it, and tear it apart. And then they move on. There is no long-term plan. There is no sustainability. There is no choice but to consume you as well. We are coming. Trees. I'm a Do you consumer. Know how fast a tree moves? Not very fast. The unfallen are a race of trees. They speak with a Scottish accent. Why do you pester the heart with your petty needs? Much like the Scottish, trees are rooted to the ground. They don't do much, and their only way of winning the game is to ask you politely. Do you know how they colonize other planets? They need to slowly, delicately, without interruption, entwine them with celestial vines and hope or pray that they didn't start next to cravers. If you enjoy pressing and turn and being a vegetable, <laughs> you'll enjoy playing the unfallen. Imagine being Me? an ostrich. Now, imagine evolving to the point where you're used as arena blood sports for the entertainment of an advanced decadent civilization. Then that civilization gets wiped out. You get your freedom and form a tribalistic society of samurai ostriches. Then you accidentally stab your katana through a giant ship and suddenly you're a major faction. The Hisho were added with the Supremacy DLC, together with the main source of tears and salt on the <sighs> Endless Phase 2 forums, Bayamoths. Bayamoths are multi-purpose capital class ships. They can support the bureaucracy oh, yeah. who talk Theocracy or theocracy, accelerate genocide, accommodate homicide, extract resources in a remote situation, and even terraform planets for improved habitation. They can do anything. That's why they're insanely expensive and you get very few of them. But that's not why people got upset. They got upset because the Bayamoth is a precursor to something a little more concerning. A planet killer is morally dubious, leaves millions of grieving survivors, and generally causes public unrest. A system killer oh. accelerates a megaton nuclear payload directly at the sun, causing it to expand into a red supergiant as the core collapses and begins to fuse hydrogen. In a single nanosecond, all life in that solar system is gonna need some SPF 70 sunscreen. The Obliterator is a system killer which is made by upgrading Upgrading a Bayamoth, and prior to many updates and patches, had no effect on public relations. I found this oh. incredibly entertaining. Because the missile actually has to travel to its destination, it often took several turns for 
enemy players to see the ball of light quickly approaching their home system. That's so At this dark. Point, you will notice something. The chat functionality, inside which <laughs> you will see a stream of colorful messages calling you a number of racial slurs, after which the player will mysteriously disconnect and add you as a friend on Steam. Even after numerous nerfs, the He Show stand tall. For the He Show, combat isn't just about winning, it's about honor, which they call Kai because they're a race of weeaboo samurai chickens. The more honorable your actions, the more Kai you generate, the more obedient your empire. And if it ever falls too low, just remember, Aztec blood sacrifices are a great way of gaining popularity. Vaulters are the DLC race designed to completely invalidate the Sofons, because for vaulters, location is no issue. We've got portals for that. Disconnected system with no clear star lane? Even better. The typical vaulter player will usually fuck off to the four corners of the galaxy and quietly win a science victory before we can even find them. Also, their mothership, the Argosi, can be used as a two-way portal. I very much enjoy parking outside an enemy system, warping in my obliterator, and cooking them instantaneously. The Riftborn are Tetris blocks from another universe which is currently overrun with super aids. In a last act of desperation, the Riftborn entered our universe. To them, it's a dystopian reality filled with all manner of squirming, wriggling creatures that piss and shit everywhere. From their perspective, they just took a one-way ticket to hell. However, oh. they don't judge. They just want to survive. Unlike us, Riftborn aren't born. They're made in the construction queue. Otherwise, they work a lot like us, except in reverse. Terrestrial planet, I sleep. Thousands degree lava planet with no trace of life real shit colonize immediately hey it's a race of abstract geometric polygons give them a break luckily they can also break reality by compressing or wow. dilating the flow of time and if you've ever been to a college fraternity you'll have no problem pronouncing their names the second last <laughs> dlc penumbra introduced a controversial mechanic hacking. It's a nice way to grab intel, sabotage enemy systems, and of course, accidentally turn a craver government into a pacifist dictatorship. With that, they also added the Umbral Choir. The Umbral Choir is an immaterial, intergalactic wraith with good intentions. Like a ghost in the machine, the Umbral Choir spreads by hacking absolutely everything. Every transmission is tapped, every system is compromised, and we have oh. no trace of who did it. Because the Umbral Choir doesn't want to be found. How do you fight something you can't see? How do you stop something that's already inside the wire? And if it's already inside the wire, then how do you know it isn't inside you already. Honestly, they're extremely fun to play, especially when your friends mouse over a system and ask why half of their GDP keeps disappearing into the Craver Pension Fund. Finally, it's a good time to talk yeah. about the last DLC, Awakening, which adds Vanakalim, a fairly interesting religious faction that I personally enjoyed, but also adds the Academy as a separate AI-controlled faction. Now, let me tell um. you why that's a problem, because the leader of the Academy, bear with me, I don't know how to pronounce his name, because Isandir takes territory which he doesn't need away from players. He can also enter your territory, destroy your fleets, and siege your planets. But lord forbid you manage to sink one of Isandir's ships, which by the way are stronger than any other faction. That's an act of aggression, and he's going to ask you to pay reparations. Small side note, if you're getting harassed and abused by Isandir and you want him to stop, you can't. Until you discover the location of the academy, you can't even do diplomacy. Now, let's say you forgive all that. You're open-minded and you're wondering, what's the point of a new academy? I am once again asking for your financial support. Every 10 turns, Isandir will ask for your most generous financial contribution to the Academy. The highest contributions will get their preferred position within the Academy. After another 10 turns, I am once again asking for your financial support. Also, he's been expertly programmed to forget any positive relations you had before, which may surprise you, since he'll go back to neutral and start attacking you. Better pay up, mm. because you can't contribute to the academy until you've paid reparations. If you try to take his home system, he'll demand you give it back and pay reparations. Who the fuck made this shit? Oh right, it's not even the same studio. They outsourced Ow. this. I'm from Buenos Aires, and I say kill them all! Yeah! All the other DLC 
up until Penumbra? Fantastic. Love it. Awakening is about $13 you can spend to make the game worse. It's such garbage <laughs> that even if I got it for free, I'd still ask for a refund. We could talk hours about strategy, that was awful. and the eternal question we always return to. Is Endless Space 2 balanced? No, it is not. There are many mods to try and fix this, but ultimately, part of what makes this game so interesting is the element of randomness, forcing you to adapt and overcome the circumstances to the best of your ability. There's many players out there who will constantly demand you remake the game, citing that they don't have an optimal five-planet system adjacent to them and can't possibly compete. If you don't, they disconnect. The equivalent of this is being born on planet Earth to a middle-class family, and immediately committing suicide to try and re-roll for better RNG. Because if I can't be born as the son of a wealthy Middle Eastern shike, I may as well not be born. Endless Space 2 is a wonderfully designed and beautifully made game, with such a level of pace and intrigue that I actually bought a legal copy. I've played it for two years, and I still keep coming back. It satisfies every tick box I ever wanted for a civilization game in space. It's enjoyable and relaxing both in single player and in multiplayer. You're probably going to desynchronize before anyone actually gets angry. I like the music and I enjoy amphibious mommy milkers. I give Endless Space 2 an extremely high score. I am also issuing Chill. a public fatwa against anyone responsible for the Awakening DLC. This time there is no discount because my inside man had a talk with Sega. Their formal response? fuck off. So, I recommend waiting for a sale, buying on discount, or using other legal methods uh -oh. of purchase that I am not yet aware of. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. I'm sorry for all the delays. Streaming really put me back. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild, generously funding and bankrolling these videos. You're all truly wonderful. Take care, and have a good one. Ow. Oh, wow. Is this just all credits? I mean, it's really cool, don't get me wrong. But... Wow. I think, um... This is definitely one of the best Seth videos I've seen. Like, he really, like, this is one of the longest, too. I feel like he really went into the game. And I meant to go to the Steam page. Okay, there. I want to see if they've come out with any DLC since then. Oh. Wait, no, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they didn't. Right, right. Oh. No, that's September 2019. So, okay, yeah. Accurate. Still accurate to today. Unless it's got patches. Um, I don't remember. I don't think I'm logged in right now. Oh, no, I am. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I never bought this game. <laughs> I know I played it. Uh, we're not going to elaborate on that one. <laughs> Let's look at the reviews. The Academy demands you pay reparations for your damage. So true. I love the concept of a guy so narcissistic he created an entire race of himself. It's, it's a really good, really good concept. Got the game. First multiplayer game. Someone said, leave me alone for a minute. I'm going to deal with something. 20 minutes later, the Academy's home system disappears in Hellfire. Good. The best thing about Horatio is that the leader of Horatio is a clone of Horatio that killed Horatio and usur usurped, usur usurped him without anyone knowing that it happened true i didn't know that but true <laughs> big titty fish mommy is gonna buy the galaxy and i'm gonna help her me too all right the joke about endless space historian is even funnier now that bungie is hiring a destiny lower historian for real i do think like Having someone dedicated to keeping your lore together makes sense, especially like for series that are kind of heavy on it. How does it feel to have the power to instantly change the all the top Steam reviews of any conceivable game to quotes from the video? Good, I assume. <laughs> Star Trek cracking out the 
despite making up meme in the 90s. A level of... It's a little... Yeah, it isn't really a meme. Just a racist dog whistle. But, uh... Yeah. Anyways. Re-educate and reintegrate. I wonder where he's going with this. Into the fucking ground. Head to guard. Do do you? Oh. Okay, sorry, I'm trying to see if there's any other good comments here. Real quick that I'm noticing. The only 4X game I've had more than 100 playthroughs on. Wow. The music, the art design, and the general feel of it is just amazing. I also love the minimalist look of the UI, though understandably some people find it either boring or too much. Both are understandable. Endless Legend is also great. I do hope they make a sequel one day. What was Endless Legend? Oh, it was like a fantasy one. I didn't like ever realize they were maybe the same team. I've never tried this one. I like um fantasy type stuff more than space. So like especially nowadays, like I don't know, I just get into it more. I feel like I maybe I want to try that. Um Yeah. Oh well. Thank you so much for watching folks. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye. Hey folks, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like the video, subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch. And have a great rest of your day. Bye.